Okay, so 1,080 degrees around this circle covers what distance? Well, that is the question for this particular video. You can see here we have a circle and uh, we're being told some information about this circle. So R is equal to two centimeters. So we have this information and the question. This is all you need to get the right answer. And I'm not gonna explain this question too much more right now because I wanna give you an opportunity to figure this thing out. So if you know how to do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually gonna show you the correct answer here in just one second. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love helping students learn mathematics. And I can tell you right now, you can be successful in math. And I'm speaking to every single one of you out there, especially those of you that have a tough time with math. As long as you're willing to work hard and you have some encouragement and most importantly, access to great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive, you can be successful in mathematics. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special test that you're uh, studying for that has math on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, or if you homeschool mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my math notes in the description as well because so many of you out there are not taking um, good enough notes, okay? Your notes should be like as awesome as you can make them, all right? Like, like so good that you can give your notes to somebody else and they can actually learn math, all right? So that's how well your notes have to be. But a lot of students take sloppy notes or no notes. Listen, start improving your notes and everything will get better. In the meantime, you can use my notes. Um, and of course, I'm gonna leave those to, uh, links in the description uh, of the video as well. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely will help me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and answer this question. So we're gonna go 1,080 degrees around this circle. What distance uh, would we cover? Of course, we gotta take into account this information about this particular circle. And if you're not quite sure what this means, I'm gonna explain all of this in a second, but let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. Okay, so you got to cover approximately 37.68 centimeters. Uh, that is going to be the distance covered uh, if you go 1,080 degrees around this circle. Okay, so some of you might be confused, like what does that even mean to go 1,080 degrees? Well, I'm going to explain all this in one second, but this is an approximation, by the way. Um, and I'll explain to you why this is an approximation, but if you got something like 37.69 or 37.67, somewhere in this neck of the woods, you likely did the prom correct. So let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, and a few stars to celebrate your awesomeness with circles today. Okay, so nice job. All right, let's go ahead and get into the solution here. So we're talking about distance covered, right? Distance covered around this circle. Now this is not to be confused with distance covered around objects. Let's just kind of do some crazy looking objects like this. If I told you to cover the distance or calculate the distance around something like a uh, rectangle, we're talking about this distance like so, right? This, the, the total sum of uh, all the sides of this figure. Well, that concept is called perimeter. So I can calculate the perimeter for this thing as well. I can add this side with this side, this side, this side, this side, and this side all together, you get the perimeter. But uh, we don't use that concept or that term perimeter when we're talking about a circle. If we wanna go all around or measure the distance around a circle, we use this word called circumference. So if you never heard of that word, but I'm pretty sure most of you have heard of that word before, the circumference is in fact the distance around a circle. But if we go around a circle, we do one complete lap, we need to start talking about degrees because this particular problem is talking about uh, 1,080 degrees. So the circumference of a circle covers how many degrees of that circle? Well, it's gonna cover a full lap and that's 360 degrees. If I wanted to know the distance halfway around a circle, 
That would be what? Well, I would, I would start from here and I would go uh, 180 degrees, right? So I would just take that 360 divided by two. That is the distance of a semicircle, all right? And of course, you can kind of calculate the quarter of a circle, which would be 90 degrees, and three fourths of a circle would be 270 degrees. So hopefully, this makes sense. Now, let's go ahead and erase all this here and talk about the formula you need to calculate the circumference of a circle. So uh, here it is right here. So the circumference is equal to two pi r or d times r. So let's talk about what r is. So r is the radius of a circle. So the radius starts from the center of the circle and it goes out to the edge of a circle. So that's what the radius is. But the diameter is a complete width of a circle. So it goes through the center, but the you kind of think of the diameter as the width of the circle, and the diameter is uh, twice the radius. Okay, so you can use this formula. The circumference is equal to the diameter times the radius, but if you don't have the diameter and you have the radius, well, you're just going to simply take that radius and multiply by 2, and then multiply that thing by pi. So 2 pi r, or the diameter times pi, uh, that is how you calculate the circumference or the distance around the circle. But let's go ahead and talk about this little thing right here, pi. So pi, uh, hopefully uh, all of you are familiar with this. It's probably uh, it very well could be the most important or one of the, certainly one of the most important numbers in mathematics. But a lot of you probably think, oh, pi is equal to 3.14. Okay, hopefully... Uh, you're familiar with 3.14. Pi is close to 3.14, but pi is not equal to 3.14. In fact, pi, if you were to look at the digits of pi, this thing goes on uh, forever and ever. So it's 3.14. I'm not quite sure the rest of the digits. I think it's a 1.5. Whatever the case is, with, uh, pi is what we call an irrational number. Okay, so the digits never terminate, they never stop, and they don't repeat, so it's no pattern. So this number can go on and on and on and on and on and on and on uh, into infinity. So if we want to know all the digits of pi, we would literally have to write an infinite amount of digits. So that's like, you know, a lot of work, and I'm pretty sure you and I don't have enough time in this lifetime uh, to <laughs> write out all the digits of pi. So guess what? We'll use a fancy symbol like this that basically says, hey, th this represents all the digits of pi, but we can approximate pi by using 3.14. Of course, more digits of pi that you use, the more accurate your answer will be. So the answer I just gave you here is based upon a approximation of 3.14. So when I approximate, or when you approximate a number in mathematics, you use this little squiggly thing, right? Uh, uh, not an equal sign. You, you basically have this, this means approximately in mathematics. So this is approximately 37.68 uh, centimeters, uh, which would be, of course, 1,080 degrees around the circle. All right, so if I wanted to, if this question was, hey, calculate um, uh, how many, uh, so 360 degrees is what distance around the circle? I'm trying to kind of formulate this question. Well, what I'm asking you is, hey, what is the circumference of the circle? Now, I wouldn't ask you that question, but now let's go ahead and talk about what this uh, 1,080 degrees represents. Okay, so let's focus in on that. We know what the circumference is, and we're going to put this all together here in just one second, but I want to make sure we understand uh, these various degrees around a circle. All right, so here I'm kind of trying to uh, clean this up a bit so we can kind of see. All right, so here is zero. Okay, zero on a circle is the same place, uh, uh, same mark as where, let's say, 360 degrees is, right? So here's zero. We go all the way around, and then we stop where we started, and that's 360 degrees, okay? But if I continue on, this is one lap, all right? One lap, I do one lap around the circle, well, I did 360 degrees, but you can continue on. You can do another lap. So two laps around the circle would be what? Well, it would be in a 360 degrees, uh, then we did another 360 degrees. So we would go 360, 
60 plus 360, 002. I'm pretty sure that's 720 degrees. So when you're given angles that are more than 360 degrees, this is how you're uh, basically thinking about it. you're doing multiple laps around the circle. So now that you understand that concept, and hopefully that makes sense to you, let's go ahead and take a look at how many laps around the circle 1080 degrees is. So all we have to do is divide that by 360 degrees and we can see that that is three laps around the circle. So basically we start here, that's 360, 720, and one more time around, we covered 1080 degrees. Okay, so 1080 degrees is three laps around the circle. So we can calculate one lap, which is what? Well, that's 360 degrees, which just is uh, the actual circumference. Uh, now we can kind of see a path forward to get the right answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this all together right now. All right, so the circumference of this circle, we're given this information in um, uh, R for the circle or the radius. So we, need, we don't need to calculate the diameter. We already have the radius, so we can use this formula. C is equal to 2 pi R, where R is the radius. So it's, this is going to be 2 times pi times 2, okay, two, 2 centimeters. So this is going to be 2 times 2. I mean, again, this is all multiplication, so the easiest way to do this is just take these numbers, multiply them. So 2 times 2 is 4, so 4 times pi. This would be the correct answer for the circumference. Now, this answer we would um, classify as the precise exact answer. So anytime you want the exact answer for anything involving a circle or involving pi, you just leave pi by itself. Okay, so... 4 pi centimeters is the precise circumference of this uh, circle. But if you want an approximation, we'll go ahead and replace that pi with an approximation of it. So a rough approximation would be 3.14. So that you can notice here that my symbols are changing. This is equal to, this is approximately now. So the circumference is approximately 4 times an approximation of pi, which is 3.14 which gives us uh, 12.56 centimeters because we're talking about length. Circumference is distance or length, and this unit of measure is centimeters, so we can't forget that unit of measure. All right, so that is one lap around the circle. So the distance for um, 1,080 degrees is going to be three times the circumference or uh, three times 360 degrees. So we're going to take three and multiply it by uh, 12.56 centimeters, and we get our lovely answer here, approximately 37.68 centimeters. Okay, so there you go. So if you had uh, trouble with this problem, or if you're confused about it, I would suspect there are a couple points that uh, may confuse a lot of people. One, this concept of degrees more than 360 degrees. That could be kind of confusing if you haven't worked with angles that are greater than 360 degrees. Uh, another thing is, is you probably uh, forgot the formula for circumference. Okay, so uh, there are a lot of formulas in mathematics. I mean, a ton. That's why you need to take notes. And you uh, can't memorize all these formulas. But there's some formulas like the circumference of a circle, area of a circle, area of a, of a triangle or rectangle. These are kind of basic uh, geometry formulas, these things I would uh, kind of recommend you commit to your long-term memory. Things like the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. There are kind of these like super important common formulas in mathematics that you do, you know, you should know without the aid of notes. But if you're learning mathematics, algebra, geometry, you're going to be inundated by so many, uh, so many formulas and whatnot that you can't learn all of them, all right? But there are some that you should know, kind of, you know, uh, kind of recall, you know, from your your um, uh, long-term uh, brain, right? It's like, okay, hey, oh yeah, I know that, I know this. So there are some of these things, but again, you know, when it comes to formulas, don't try to learn all of them through rote memorization. That's just gonna be too overwhelming. Use your notes. All right, so if you need uh, more help with basic geometry, things like surface area, circumference, and uh, these type of problems, uh, let me go ahead and give you a couple suggestions. One, you could probably check out like my pre-algebra course. I have a nice uh, chapter 
in uh, uh, for basic geometry. Um, of course, now if you're at the more advanced level, like let's say high school level geometry, I have a complete geometry course as well. But this kind of stuff is kind of middle school level, high school level mathematics. So I would recommend that course. And I also have additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out with this basic stuff as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.